All right, what's going on? Charles Botenston here. I think this is probably going to be one of the best videos that I'm going to make in a while. And the reason being is that these are the top things out of 12 years of doing self-help, personal development, reading all these books that I do, looking at all the YouTube videos, subscribing to all these channels, Pride Podcast, and essentially just compiling it. A, I don't have anything to sell. There's no book, there's no ebook, there's no course, there's no event, there's nothing. I'm essentially going along the path with you. And before I actually get down the actual eight items that I wrote down here let me just bring up something that a lot of people are maybe they see something online and I'm actually gonna do an Instagram post about this and, and I'm gonna move my Instagram more towards longer posts instead of here's what I'm doing it's more about this is what I'm thinking and I have no outlet besides writing it and the number one thing that I'm gonna be writing about is the comparison mindset think about it 15 years ago your comparison were to your friends around you okay so obviously the five people that you spend the most time with you know that yeah that holds true now but now it's even worse because you can go online and see all the people that have more followers than you you could go online and see more wealthy people that are your age or younger you know the people that have more fame or glory or accolades or medals or who just won the championship you read about it back in the day in the newspaper now you have instant access you could watch games live you could see your friends going to that concert that you wanted to go to having that vacation that you wanted to go to in other words there's a comparison mindset there's a fear of missing out so this is the thing as i go down this before I go down this, let me just tell you is that I heard this a while ago and, and it's so true is that most people, I live in New York City, I have a pretty good idea of the amount of people that are what I'm about to say. Most people, they are tired and they're scared. Most people are tired and they're scared. They're tired of maybe their job their spouse, their manager, their money, their body, something. They're tired of their kids. They're doing the same shit over and over. They're tired and they're scared because they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't know where to start. They don't know, they have no idea. They said, I have so much, so much shit wrong in my life that I don't even know what to, wh where do I even start with this? And this is the thing is that what I'm about to go over is there's this Slight Edge, great book, highly recommended. That's the title of it, it's called Slight Edge. And essentially I saw this in my life. All the people that I looked up to, all those people that had more followers, more money, more business, more accolades, guess what happened? Over the years, I was, there was a huge gap between where, where I was and where these people were. And by the way, they were my friends, making more money, in better situations, more happy, whatever. And then over the years, it was like this. And I caught up and guess what? And now I'm going beyond. And it's due to a lot of these eight things. So let's get right into it. Number one is distractions. So a book just came out, it's called Digital Minimalism. And it is, I'll actually bring it up, Digital Minimalism. And essentially this author actually wrote Deep Work, which we're gonna be talking about in a bit. Cal Newport. So Cal Newport wrote Digital Minimalism. I just ordered the book, it just came out. It's actually at my house and I'm gonna be cracking into it this weekend. I, I'm definitely gonna be going into it, but essentially let me just give you a story. So earlier this year, I was just a little bit lost. I was just a little bit unhappy and I didn't know why. And what's funny is that if you, have headphones in and you're always listening to music or you're always on your phone or you're always watching TV or you're walking around and you're being distracted by looking down at social media or email or text messaging, there is no silence, okay? Up until 10 years ago, 15 years ago, is that we would walk around in silence and understand where we were unhappy, number one, and number two is how we would be able to change it. This is the problem is that if you have all these distractions, that unhappiness is not able to enter your head because you're uncomfortable with it. You're uncomfortable with maybe dealing with the shit in your life. So guess what you do? You just push it off and then you push it off and then you push it off and then we have midlife crisis or you push it off and then you just say, it's too late, I'm not even gonna try. This is what happened with me is that because I don't distract myself or because I removed all those distractions, whether that was apps on my phone, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube are no longer on my phone because I don't listen to music, because anything else in my life I removed, I have no TV, nothing. I removed all of that. I was unhappy and I said, I need a challenge. I need to do something. I need to work towards something. So essentially I saw a documentary. It was on an Iron Man. This guy 
Brian Rose, who has the YouTube channel London Real, and it followed him and this other guy who had an incredible life in New York City, and, and they had a coach. So I reached out to the coach. I said, I need, I think I want to do this. And essentially, that has been my focus, okay? I, I cannot tell you how much this has helped in my life, but I would have never come to the point to sign up for a coach and two Ironmans, this year, two half Ironmans, and two that are Olympic triathlon distances, which are still really challenging, is that if I if I had all these distractions in my life, I would have just pushed it away, been like, I don't know, it's unhappiness and I don't know where it's coming from. Remove the distractions, allow that silence to come in, which I'm gonna be talking about more in a bit. Continuing, 80-20, everyone's heard of the 80-20 rule. Obviously, this applies literally to everything in your life. 80% of all productivity comes from 20% of what you do. This is all the productivity. 80% of all of the good food comes from 20% of your decisions. In other words, I would not be in the shape I am in if I don't make the 20, which is really hard, 20% of the decisions I make result in 80% of my energy, my enthusiasm. So look at your life and say, okay, when I eat right, what are the 20% decisions that I'm making? Because 20% is the salad, whole grain, raw, no meat, no milk almond milk instead, you know, water instead of coffee. Have one of these jugs. In other words, 20% equate to 80% of your results, 20% of your decisions in every area, every area of your life. If you start making calls, that's exactly gonna be 80% of your business. In other words, sales calls, it's gonna be 80% of your business. If you do 20% of the hardest workout, that will equate to 80% of your muscle fatigue, break down and then build up. I know that stretching is probably, it's not fun, it's not easy, or I'm sorry, it's not fun, but it's easy. But if I get on the bike right after that, that is 20% equating for 80% of my results. So look at your life and say, okay, when I'm enthusiastic, when I'm happy, is it when I went to bed at 9 p.m. and I woke up at 5 a.m.? Because that happens with me. Oh, okay, I'm gonna do that every single time. That's 80% of the results, 20% of the decision. Moving on, confidence, all right? Everyone talks about it. Obviously, if you wanna get into a relationship, confidence comes when Two things. Number one is you keep promises to yourself. I know to Tony Robbins talks about when you see success, or I'm sorry, you see, okay, T Tony Robbins has talked about, you see progress, you get confidence, you keep on going. I go backwards and I say, it's keeping, pro keeping promises to yourself because it's all about the process. It's not about the result. If I make 80 phone calls today and I'm in, I'm zero for 80, my confidence is gonna skyrocket because I, I had a belief in my mind that I'm not gonna be able to make 80 phone calls. But if I make 80 phone calls for say cold calling and trying to get business, that, that's essentially saying I kept the promise to myself. If you keep the promise to yourself to wake, waking up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. or going to the gym or whatever the case is for you, I'm gonna approach one pretty girl today. I'm gonna ask that guy out. I'm gonna study more. I'm gonna remove all the shit in my life. Just something, I'm not gonna go on Instagram today. I'm not gonna go on Facebook today. I'm not gonna watch TV today. If you hold yourself, if you promise yourself that and you actually do that, you will get confidence because what you then start saying, when I say I'm gonna do something, I do it. The opposite is true. If you just start blowing through your, your wake up call, blowing through the sales calls, you're gonna start losing confidence. Moving on, social. First of all, social media is not good. I already talked about Cal Newport. And the biggest thing is, I, I wrote it down here, is that when you post on social media, it's for significance. You're posting about you at a concert. You're posting about a beautiful sunrise. Even if it's a beautiful sunrise, you're saying, look at me. I'm in an incredible area where I'm watching an orange sunset. It may not seem like a lot, but that's why you're posting to social media is for the significance, for the recognition, for the likes, for the comments, for, wow, look at this guy. He is living a great life. And, and ironically enough, since leaving Instagram, I'm, I still have my account and I download it on weekends, but this is the funny thing is people miss my video stories. So because they miss the video stories, I walk through life and I'm like, wow, if I had Instagram, I would have storied that funny moment of a guy falling over his bicycle in New York City, or I would have uh, videoed this argument between two, cats, two taxi cabs, but now it's in my brain or it's lost. So now I walk through life way more present. And then the other thing I wrote here is that you consume social media because you need that dopamine hit or you're bored. It's one of the two or it's both. You post for significance and you consume because you're bored and or you want that dopamine hit. Now that I'm, I'm bored and I have no outlet, I'm like, wow, what do I do? When I go home, I don't have 
Instagram, I don't have a TV, I don't have Facebook, I don't have, well I have YouTube, I could watch it on, on, on my browser, but guess what, I go home and I read. I read, I, I, I've read in person, yes I do Audible books, but I've read more books this year than probably the last four months. I've read more books in the last month than I have in the last four months previously because I have nothing to do, I have nothing to do. Moving on, self-awareness. Okay, Gary Vaynerchuk has talked about this multiple times, is that the problem with self-awareness is that he doesn't talk about what that means. Okay. Yes, there's obviously uh, emotional intelligence, which means that you know if you're selling selling to someone and you see that it's not hitting, in other words, they're not getting what you want or they're not getting your point across, that you have the emotional intelligence to say, okay, what I'm doing right now is not working. Maybe I have to ask more questions. Maybe I have to relate more. Maybe I have to build more rapport. Whatever the case is. Along the line with this is that when you when you are self-aware, you understand your habits. Okay. And I I swear, here's the story. So it's all about the trigger. The trigger trigger leads to the habit. You have to figure out the trigger. So when you go home, what's the first thing you do? Do you turn on your TV? Do you take your shoes off? So for me, what I do is when I go home, the first thing I used to do is I would go home, take all my shit, put my gym bag over here, sit on the couch. Now, the first thing I do is empty my gym bag, which then triggers me to then refill it for tomorrow, which triggers me to put out my gym clothes for tomorrow, which triggers me to put out my work clothes for tomorrow. Do you see that series of events? So most people think I go home and it just happens. No, I, me thinking of emptying the gym bag, putting my clothes out, putting my gym clothes out, doing all these things, getting my food ready. So it's, it's in this thing, which is my uh, container where I put oats, peanuts, and then uh, raisins. It, it, it's literally a 30 minute ordeal. But when I go home, all I think about is, okay, start with your bag. That's the trigger. Which, here's another trigger. This morning I have on my, my computer screen, which is right here in front of me, is that I have M, an M folder on my Google Chrome right on my toolbar, which means it's morning okay so when I go in I right click and I go open all open all websites into another tab so in other words on within that folder it opens my calendar it opens my CRM it opens the script for my calls it opens my call recording and it opens Brian Johnson which is way better than YouTube this is the thing is if I walk in I turn on my computer I have two screens right here if I go to YouTube I'm fine and the reason being is that YouTube is saying look at all this shit that you could be watching. You could be walk, watching about triathlons because we know you're, you're training for a triathlon. Here's, here's some bullshit, you know, drama video that you gotta watch. Here's something that you gotta watch about a book review. In other words, if I go to YouTube, I'm not controlling my day. That's a trigger. I walk in and I say no to YouTube. So guess what? Guess what I, I had install and I'm actually gonna reinstall it. I, I took it away because I actually had to do a lot of things on, on YouTube, but uh, it's called, uh, I, I forgot the name of the, the program, but it's a Google Chrome extension that blocks certain websites. So I'm blocking YouTube, which means between the hours of nine to five, I can't do anything. And that's good because that's a distraction. Moving on, sit in silence. I already talked about this. And the reason being is that this will actually create uncomfortable situation, okay? We will not be able to have uncomfortable situate uncomfortable conversation with say our friends, our parents, uh, our spouse, our manager, ourselves. If we're not able to actually sit in silence by ourselves. Okay, that's the biggest thing. Because say earlier this year, I took away all the distractions and then I filled it with silence, which is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. Do you feel that? Do you feel uncomfortable right now? By the way, that's not that's not me, that's you. You're not able to sit in silence. You need to be stimulated. That's a problem, that's a problem. You need to sit in silence when you get on an elevator, no phone. When you're waiting online, no phone. Sit there and entertain yourself with your thoughts, because if you can't sit there in uncomfortable silence, you're not, you're fucked. That, that's the best way to say it. Because you need something to entertain you at all times. I'm so passionate about that. Unhappiness, and then we're just gonna wrap it up. Unhappiness, why are you unhappy? You're unhappy because you're right here. You wanna be here, but there's such a big gap. The bigger the gap, the more unhappy you are. But if you're like this, you're right here. This is where you wanna be. If it's really small, you're almost living up to your potential. Obviously, this is really tough. And I don't recommend this because this means that you you have really no room to grow. You should be as close to where you are and where you want to be and just it just moves along like that. I make 100,000, I want to make 110, 115, 120, 130 next year. If it's like this, you're deeply unhappy. I wanted a wife and kids and money and body and everything else or, or I am not that and then this is your ideal self. The bigger the gap, the more unhappy you are. That's where unhappiness comes from. And by the way, if you actually have gratitude, gratitude is tough, I understand. But if you actually do a little research, no electricity, 
electricity, no sanitary toilets, no clean water, deliver delivered food, on-demand food. If you were working, everything had to be cooked and brought to work. If you were work, and I'm talking about hundreds of years, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, you would actually have to cook all the food that you made. You'd have to go to a grocery store. Just understand that. So your unhappiness would have been a dream 20 years ago. Just understand that for a second. And last thing is deep work. Nobody, nobody, nobody could sit down for an hour or an hour and a half today. Very few people can and do what they need to do. Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy, great book. The One Thing by Gary Keller, incredible book. Feel the fear and do it anyway. All of these books essentially say, if you sit down and you do the one thing you don't want to do, confidence comes, productivity comes. Deep Work by Cal Newport, highly recommend the book. And then the other is Patience. Patience, it will come. I'm reading the book, it's called The Practicing Mind, okay? The Practicing Mind essentially means you don't like something because you don't want to practice it. But if you like to practice it, and by the way, a lot of people, here's two examples. I, I wanted to be an actor. I went to one audition, I quit. I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. I went to one stand-up comedian open mic night, I quit right after it. There was something else that I wanted to be and right after that, I just said no. And the reason being is that I didn't wanna practice going to auditions. I didn't wanna practice standing on stage and making jokes. I didn't wanna do that. Practicing mind will go where energy flows and then you start enjoying the practice of shooting jump shots before the big game, working out before the triathlon, making phone calls or, or before making phone calls, you practice your script. So hopefully this helps. I know this is a lot longer, almost you know, 15, 20 minutes of uh, beautifulness. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. As always, subscribe to the video. I don't know what to tell you besides that the number one thing in 2019, 2020, 2021, whenever you're watching this, is that you have to remove distractions, which will bring silence. And when you bring silence, it's gonna be uncomfortable. But when you're uncomfortable, that's when you start saying, I need to change. And when you say, I need to change, that's when you start looking for ways to change. You start getting pissed off and you start saying, fuck this, I hate debt, or I don't like my relationship, or I don't wanna be single, or I want more money, or I want a better job, or I want a better body. But you'll never get there if you keep on distracting yourself. So leave your comments below. Have an amazing day. As always, send me an email, charles at boatinston.com. Talk to you guys.